we got to go with week zero, some picks and bets, guys. And last year, I did turn a profit at 52% right at. And so here's how we're going to do this this year, Dave. And Wait, I, I, had to tell you, you, I thought you had to do 58.5 to cover the juice. No, it's 52 point, 52.35, like something like that. Okay. But I, I barely broke it. I'm not going to pretend I, I, I broke it the way I wanted to. But okay. I did turn you a profit. So time for me to make you a profit again. Now, let, let me tell you guys how we're going to do this this year, okay? And Dave's going to track for me. We're going to bet the spread and the over-under of every single SEC game, every single game involving an SEC team. Okay. And we're going to bet the spread and over-under of every game involving two top 25 teams. Okay, and you're going to track this is what you said, right? And I want to track this. On top of that, I will give you my five favorite bets of the year. Some of those uh, – of the week, excuse me, of the week. Some of those will involve teams, current teams that are – some you know, you know what I'm saying. Some of them will be new. Some of them will involve some of the picks. So I'm I'm diving in on week zero. I'm just doing the best bets. None of the because there's no like SEC or top 25 games to fit by that criteria. But for my best bets of week zero, let's get going. I'm going to start with uh, Georgia Tech, Florida State. Dave, Georgia Tech's going to cover the they're they're ten and a half point underdogs. I got them Georgia Tech plus ten and a half. I'm I'm. Hey now. I'll roll with you there. What else you got? All right. Montana State at New Mexico. Dave. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I know. But no. hold on. Here, hold, let me finish, and I want to tell you why. I know nothing about this game whatsoever. Nothing. But Montana State's an FCS school favored by two touchdowns at New Mexico. Typically, when Vegas does that, they try to trick you. You think, oh, that's not a real spread. This team's obviously going to cover that. They're an FCS school. Because I don't, because I know Vegas is trying to fool me, I'm not going to let him do it, and I'm taking Montana State to cover the 13 and a half point spread. So naughty on a Friday, Caleb. You're out there. What else? All right, so a couple more. Um, no good money line bet this week, so because I think all the favorites are going to win. So I just say take Florida State money line at Georgia Tech. Florida State's going to win against Georgia Tech. That's going to be your best payout on all money lines of the teams I think is going to win. So hey now. I agree with that, but I wouldn't bet that game because all the travel and goofiness that goes on. Yeah. Which it's kind of like a bowl, my... it's kind of like a bowl game where I was maybe out of the place at one a.m. and Tennessee's entire defensive line walked in. <laughs> um, so how, how serious do you take a trip to Dublin? I mean, maybe you're more like this is fun, but no, it's a football game too. Or do you say it's a football game and let's have a little bit of fun? So it this one is really tough for me to predict because of the bowl game reason. By the way, did I tell you that Mike Griffith, who might be doing some stuff with us in the fall as well, actually texted the defensive line coach and said your entire group just walked into this bar at 1 a.m. <laughs> well, to be fair, that's because bowl games that are more meaningless than regular season games in college football and even were back then. So... <laughs> that that turned out to be a great source. Oh, we knew, we knew something that we could share. All right, Caleb, anybody else on our picks? <laughs> Yeah, a couple more. So now i got a couple over-under. So because of what you just talked about, Florida State has a new quarterback in DJ Ugalele, who I think will be good, but he's new and he struggles every year at his first start against a Power 5 team. And Georgia Tech has a defensive-minded coach. And this game's in Ireland. It's going to be sloppy. I'm going under 55 and a half. I don't think – I think this game could be in the 40s. It could be – Oh, I totally agree with that. Um, hey, now. you got the travel. you got all that stuff. Players probably getting drunk midweek on Guinness. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, here's my favorite one, Dave, because um, uh, it's SMU Nevada, another ACC school now because SMU is in the ACC. Did you know that Casey Woods is the offensive coordinator at SMU? I did not. Do I know yes. who Casey Woods is off the top of my head? That's Do you? crazy. No. Who's Casey the, Woods? The former holder at Tennessee who was the like the 18th string wide receiver. I think he dated – didn't he date Philip Moore's daughter at one point? Um, I think he did. But uh, – I yes, think you're thinking of the linebacker who married him. No, no, this is Casey. Okay, well, Casey Woods was a holder and a like 18th string receiver on the team. Okay, um, <laughs> he is the offensive coordinator at SMU. They had an elite offense last year. So, out of respect to former Vol Casey Woods, I'm in SMU's offense being top 10 last year, and Nevada firing their coach after a two and 10 season and having a defense that was outside of the top 110, 110. Take the over 55 and a half. I think SMU themselves will go over that number. I'm all in on that. That's my favorite bet of the week. SMU, Nevada, over 55 and a half. Man, take those points all day. 
Here's a good question about Adam. Um, would Ohio State, uh, would Kiffin be considered Ohio State? I don't think Ohio State would consider him because they're kind of uppity. Um, and Daryl, I see you disagree with me, but I don't think they would take him. Also, know firsthand that Lane really wants to be in the SEC. Now, if he thought that the clock was ticking, let's say he spent three or four more years at Ole Miss and his greatest coaching years are still in front of him, maybe he would take a job outside the SEC in which he thought he could win a national championship. But in all honesty, when we get to three or four years, it's probably just going to be a mega conference anyway, right? Yeah, I don't think it's going to matter as much. And I mean, I think Lane Kiffin wants to stay in the SEC because of the fertile recruiting ground and being in the, and having the inside track to the national perks of being in the SEC. But all of those things exist with Ohio State. The only drawback, I'll say this, Dave. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you why I think he, why I know he wants to be in the SEC because he thinks it's the best football and he wants to compete against the best. For right. all Lane's faults, he is a very fierce competitor. And let's let's say the because but Ohio State wouldn't be too much. It's not like you wouldn't have great competition in game days with Ohio State. Here's the thing with Lane Kiffin, and I actually think this is partially why he left Tennessee. I think Lane Kiffin does not like overcast or cold weather. He wants the sunny weather. Oh, yeah. wherever he is, something and, to that. I live yeah, about it, as I live about as north as I can live. And yeah, and is it? I mean, Knoxville because it's in the mountains. Is it safe to say Knoxville probably has? The dreary is one of the top three dreariest places, not depressing, but dreariest of like SEC towns, right? Where Knoxville, Knoxville, because it's in the mountains, a lot of overcast, smoky mountains, things like that. You don't get like the bright, sunny days that you get at the Mississippi schools, the Alabama schools, the Florida schools. I don't know, it's pretty gorgeous right now looking outside the studio. I'm looking forward okay, to but getting out because it's in the mountains, and I know this study climate a lot of times when when there are storm clouds they get trapped in mountains they get trapped in valleys so knoxville's more overcast than most now it's actually beautiful in knoxville because it fits the fall but i think lane kiffin guys lane kiffin wants to go to florida he wants to go to florida he wants the beach life and he wants to pick up those girls on the beach and maybe wow. give edwards on a call what if he's truly committed to the 26 year old he's dating now all right the show represented by <laughs> banks and jones <laughs> <laughs> 